Hey guys, you're watching Explore the Weird. If you're into creepy and weird, you must be a goon because you're interacting with the video. Hopefully, I'll see you in future videos and you'll interact again. It's real easy to join the Ganja Goons gang. All you gotta do is interact with the video. It's that simple. I'm not even asking you to smoke the like, hit the subscribe, support the channel by becoming a member. I'm simply saying interact with the video. Help me and the YouTube algorithm spread the word and find other goons that are into long reactions. We're a longer form reaction channel. If you're into short form, monotonous, slow moving, barely providing feedback, don't know if they're really watching with you or just watching at the end and <laughs> adding their two cents in, we are not that. I'm going to be with you the entire way and we are going to grow and explore together it's gonna be quite intriguing and it's gonna be fun so with that we're gonna get right into it uh more for you page content my algorithm is very very good and i want to see uh what it continues to show me i'm really all about this right now i'm like in this funk and i'm like let's go through this this is pretty good actually <laughs> all right let's get right into it this rapper sold his soul in jail and became wildly famous when he got out how did Here's XX Temptation become an overnight star when it looked like he was about to spend a lot of time in jail? Some say it had to do with this phone call he received while he was in jail and was given sacrifice ritual instructions. Now this phone call lasted about five minutes, so I'm just going to give you the key parts and try and tell you what it meant. Yes, I can hear you. See it. Thank you, goddess of crossroads, darkness, witchcraft, wisdom, and, and the moon. Please come to me. Huh? Please come to me. Please. Please come to me. Please. Please. Hecate. Please come to me. Please, Hecate. Yeah. Please. Protect me and bring me freedom. Okay. Protect me and bring me freedom? Mm-hmm. Oh. Through this sacrifice. Bring me freedom through this. Through this sacrifice, okay? Um, treat me as if one of your own. Treat me as one of your own. I can bring forward my life. Yeah. Accept this sacrifice. This call is from the Miami Day Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Center. So it's F O M O T E I T B E. Yeah, unless she like messed it up. It looks like a T. What more evidence do you need that these rappers are selling their soul? Yo, that is wild. That is wild. I didn't think XXX Tentacion did um, do that. I'm a big fan of XXX. I love his music. Juice World loved his music. Um, literally any of the guys that have passed away in the name of music, you know, even OG like Kurt Cobain. Um, I, I, I'm real deep into this rabbit hole. Michael Jackson, uh, Prince, like I want them all to be alive. I want them um, you know, to continue to exist in this world, but unfortunately I don't know. You know, maybe they're all doing the Machiavelli type thing and they're all uh, hiding uh, like they're insinuating or, you know, even Tupac type style. <laughs> you know, you really don't know or Big E wherever you may land. But regardless, yeah, this is a, a very interesting phone call. It definitely uh, made it appear like he did a sacrifice. He's literally used the word sacrifice in there. But regardless of whatever he may have done, uh, his music is quite intriguing. I don't want to... I demolish it because I know it does speak to a lot of people and those individuals have good intentions that it, this music does speak to and has gotten them out of a crazy funk and really when it comes to XXX guys my wife and I have both grew up on his music um, and I have attended uh, festivals where I've seen him and I'm att actually attending another festival <laughs> where I'll see even more artists and it's going to be kind of sad because it's like one of the festivals where I did see him rolling loud out there um, so, yeah, this is crazy. All right, let's go to the next one. Why is nobody talking about this about the upcoming solar eclipse on April the 8th? This is going to blow your mind. Check this out. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus says, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, but no sign will be given to it except for the sign of the prophet Jonah. And in Luke 17, Jesus says, As it was in the days of Noah, so it shall also be in the coming of the Son of Man. So get ready. Check this out. 
path that the solar eclipse will be taken on April the 8th will literally be going through the towns of Jonah, Texas, several towns and cities named Nineveh, and also, get this, through Rapture, Indiana. It also crosses where the Ark is in Williamston, Kentucky. And that's not even the craziest part. All of this is going to be happening under the constellation Cetus, which literally means the whale. Jesus tells us there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars for the hour that we are living in. If you believe we are living in the last days, follow or subscribe now for more. I'm not sure if we're living in the last days. I'm not sure when those last days are going to come, but I will tell you, be prepared. Be prepared if we're in the last days. If it truly is, um, we are left on the earth or... You are one of the luckies and you got into this rapture tape thing, depending on whatever you uh, feel. You know, I personally go, hey, it could be an illumination. There could be a light uh, that's coming in and it could be either a world ending light or a reset type light or a transcendence type light where you continue to transcend and move and keep popping realms. I'm a guy where I'm taking all the goons with us. Join the Ganja Goons gang. We're going to continue to hop. There is no stopping us. And yeah, I'm definitely intrigued. I've heard about this uh, eclipse uh, coming in and um, it's going to get quite intriguing to see if anything happens from it. I have a theory that potentially nothing is going to happen in our uh, realities. We're just going to keep popping. If something does happen, we're not going to be able to see it. It probably will happen and CERN's going to fix it. Oh, Teddy, you catch it on. Yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. All right. Let's uh, keep it going. Did you know that papaya seeds kill intestinal parasites and reduce bloating? Did you know warm lemon water on an empty stomach in the morning dissolves mucoid plaques in the intestinal walls? Did you know cloth oil is one of the best herbs for healthy gums and mouth infections? One teaspoon of ginger daily can reduce inflammation and reduce fat deposits in the liver. Did you know that kale has more calcium than milk, more iron than beef and 10 times more iron than spinach? Did you know that one apple can give you more energy than drinking a cup of coffee? Did you know that eating cucumber daily reduces eye bags in just seven days? Did you know that following me is free and will make you healthier? Yo, this guy's like another version of Dr. Sebi. Um, yeah, quite intriguing. I never knew about the papaya. Uh, eating papaya reduces bloating as well as kills intestinal parasites. And then he mentioned uh, kale uh, as well as um, other um, remedies. And you start to wonder, hey... If there's natural remedies and we're all being poisoned by all these other um, foods, even um, people have dependence on uh, caffeine when it comes to coffee. And he goes, hey, you can just eat an apple a day. Buddy, let me tell you, not many people are going to be switching to <laughs> eating apples instead of coffee. That coffee dependence is so strong amongst some of these guys. And, you know, it really comes in uh, because of that caffeine. And they, they do say caffeine is one of the... Uh, strongest uh, and most addictive drugs that uh, we have so you start to wonder um, but regardless yes natural remedies all the way you guys know me I don't drink coffee nor tea all I do is smoke the like button are you smoking the like button right now make sure double check double check oh wait you're a goon you're interacting with the video. That's right. I'll see you again on the next one. Please help the channel out. Um, I'm in some weird shadow band. You guys know I keep saying the same thing. I don't want to keep saying the same thing for the next like three months. But dude, this algorithm is so weird. They like promote uh, this type of content. Then they like uh, hit you with like uh, warnings and strikes because you're talking about this type of content. It's like, dude, there is. I need to find that happy medium. So I do need your support. Do help me out. Um, I would appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, goons. You guys are the best. All right, uh, let's keep it going. I'd already done my own research that once you have wide metastasis, small cell lung cancer, you're literally a goner. The 0% chance of survival and three to six months of life expectancy, and I was basically told to go home and get my affairs in order and think about hospice. And the next day, I got a call from a large animal veterinarian in western Oklahoma who's a college friend and family friend and he told me this crazy story about a scientist at Merck on the veterinary side who has been doing cancer research on mice and she had hundreds of mice that she implanted cancers in all their body parts brain stomach liver pancreas etc and her mouse population came down with intestinal parasites and so she had no choice but to save her research she gave her all of her mice finbendazole if you went out to any zoo in the world they bring in finbendazole truckload front end loader head high piles in bays because they give that drug to every single animal in the animal 
animal kingdom. And one of the oldest and safest drugs around, right? It's been around for 40 years. So she did, and unfortunately, or fortunately for all of us, she also learned that she accidentally killed all the cancer. Well, that, was, it, that was a surprise, right? Yeah, it's just a serendipitous <laughs> surprise, right? I have never even heard of this drug, fenbendazol. I, I didn't even know zoos were administering that to all animals. I thought each animal required different types of drugs, you know? Oh my god, that is just mind-blowing. So, like, are these animals dependent on these? Or uh, is it because whatever these animals are being fed are uh, causing these animals to get, you know, cancers and they need this drug to continue to sustain them in captivity you start to wonder you start to wonder i'm not sure how legitimate this guy's um expertise is but it sounds like he was in hospice at death store and he did recover i've heard many stories like this with people that either have near-death experiences um or uh are just really close to death and do uh, have a miraculous recovery that is unexpected and it is nice to hear their nice feel-good stories and with that we're gonna keep it going the Terminator is the prequels to uh, the beginning of the matrix Sarah Connor is actually Neo's mother so JC John Connors Jesus Christ grows up to be Neo one and the same in the matrix the matrix is in the future the Terminator is the past, it's time travel, past, present, and future time travel. It's the second coming of the Christ, the evolutions of consciousness, man versus the machine. So the machines, the Terminator machines, hear that a child is going to be born that's going to terminate them in the future when they oppress man. So, see, it's a man versus the machine. It's God's children versus man's children, which was technology. So man versus nature. Exactly. So the Terminator has to time travel to the past because they know it's Sarah Connor and they have to kill her, terminate her, so she won't have the baby. And Kyle Reese, he comes from the future to protect her and he invertly gets her pregnant and he has to go back to the future. And so it's the Immaculate Conception because now she's pregnant and she fell in love with a man, but did it really happen? Did he exist? And then this child, when you see the three Terminators, the, the, the boy and then the man child, subconsciously he doesn't know why the Terminator is trying to kill him until he's hidden out in the city, in the Matrix, the future. When he reaches 30 years of age, the rebellion, the reloaded, revolution starts. And the rebels come and they find him because they've been watching him all along. That's what the guardians and the sentinels are all about. And so they wake him up to his purpose. They take him to Morpheus to train him to fight the machines. They take him to the Oracle because of the prophecy. So this is the whole epic story. It's an epic. Because this plays into why this sudden, home. this sudden mental change on Facebook. Where is Facebook now a threat where they need to regulate them and shut them down? Facebook is nothing but a database for the CIA. That's all it is. It has all of your family's pictures, all of your friends. It has all the information. They used it here in Vegas when they had that car accident. Remember when the Maserati right by the Cromwell? Yes, when yes. that happened uh -huh. right there, well, all they did was take camera footage from uh, Caesars, Bally's, and, you know, other uh, casinos. And they went and they took this footage and they got the license plates. And then they saw that the guy did, you know, California. He rented that uh, Range Rover. And after they did that, they went to social network and they found his girlfriend on Twitter and so they found his picture and then they went to LA because they knew they were from LA put his uh, picture on a $250,000 billboard and put a reward up for him for $25,000 and they got him within two weeks within two weeks because of the technology so how should we how do you advise people to share their image, well, their there's, data? There's not going to be any more privacy. Everything is camera down. Everything is caught on camera. And this is what is going to be about in the future, virtual reality that I'm explaining in The Matrix and Terminator. Everything is going to be, so now it's going to be so easy. 
you're, you're not going to have any more paper passports. It's just going to be where you come into the airport. They're going to scan you, your body, retinal, fingerprints, the whole nine yards. This is what clear is about. Right That's that right. Airport. That's what clear, yeah. This way, nobody has to alter paper and put a picture or a name on there because they have your bone structure, they have your eyes, they got your fingerprints. This is the database and they match you up. You see what I'm saying? And you go through. So that way no terrorists can come through and pretend to be somebody or, or somebody that they're looking for that's the most wanted. You see what I'm saying? Because all of this technology is going to store ruling. It's artificial intelligence. It's going to store ruling everything. Once the satellites come into play that I'm talking about this, maybe another five to ten years from now, they're really going to play uh, a phenomenal part. Because this is why Apple and Microsoft became the billion dollar, trillion dollar babies is because IBM and Xerox didn't know what a mouse was. Mm -hmm. A mouse meaning they didn't know what the internet was going to be. You see what I'm talking about? They didn't want to move into that technology. The studios don't know what streaming is. They got pissed off because Netflix paid $50 million and got three or four Oscars for the movie Roma. But it was never shown in the movie theaters at all. It was watched. And that's why Steven Spielberg and all of it. You know, when we come back, yes. I, I'm going to have uh, some of my crew to join you, my technical people, the superhero. We mentioned when you were coming on your lawsuits and the battles you've had to fight, and you've just won in Utah. Yes. But it's always a battle for you. Well, the reason why it's always a battle for me is because the government refuses to protect my copyrights. You know, I own the copyright, so all the derivative movies, the fran both franchises I own, it was adjudicated in Utah September the 25th, 2014. So why am I still with a RICO case here in Nevada, which I just won, but they're still trying to fix it so they can continue to use the stolen money, which is untraceable, and it's all linked to Hillary Clinton's foundation and money laundering. Do you consider yourself politically neutral? I consider myself totally neutral. All I'm worried about is for the people. Because if the government doesn't protect my copyrights, he doesn't protect yours. But the government afraid, is afraid of you. I'd be afraid of you. Well, there's no need to be afraid of me because well, I only stand for principles. But, but what you know and the knowledge you share and what you have insights to can be very dangerous to some people. Yes. But my job is to come here and waken people. That's what the matrix is about, to wake you up from the matrix, to get you out of the illusions and the lies and the ignorance. So it's not dangerous for me because that's my job. That's what I came here to do. That's why I wrote the matrix and Terminator to wake people up so they can move on to greater, better things. Yeah, but a lot of these movie houses and these studios and the Facebooks of the world don't want people to know what happens to them every day when they share the information. But that's destroying their free will, but and do God you think, doesn't want that. But people, people want to play, want to be ignorant. They don't want to know that they're being exploited. It requires too much responsibility when they find out. Well, that's what the blue, the blue pill and the red pill is about. The red pill is about the blood of the living beings. The black and the blue ink is the machines. But this is the, the human's world. We are the winners. They are the losers. So people need to exert their free will regardless of what anybody wants. So what are the unintended consequences of all this that we're talking about? Their people's consciousness will shift and they will go on to create and do better things. They won't be in bondage. And this is the whole purpose of the Matrix and Terminator and the new work that's coming, Matrix 4. It's a Matrix 4 book is out, it's been selling for nine years since 2010 around the entire globe. People have to wake up and shift their consciousness so they can create, so they can build. Because you can't stay in the past. Everything must change, right? One of the things in the one minute that we have left, if you don't remember anything else about the broadcast today, is this. You're not as free as you think you are. You're in bondage in more ways than you imagine. And it's a different kind of slavery, very dangerous kind of slavery that the mind and how we concede ourselves to people without any thoughts or any challenge and we're so willing to surrender. 
freedom comes with a price. It takes as much to maintain it as it did to establish it. It's not really free, and it's but, not for the faint of heart. But man is always going to take that challenge because man wants to be free. Look, everybody loved The Matrix and Terminator because it woke them up. They didn't even realize they were in the dream. They didn't realize they were in a simulation. They didn't realize they were in the illusions. But now that they are awakened, they will fight. Will you fight? Are you awakened? Are you ready to embrace your destiny? Because freedom comes from God, not from man. And the moment you realize that, you'll begin that journey of freedom. Thank you so much. I want to say one thing. Like Morpheus said, I didn't tell you it was going to be easy. But it will be fair if you fight the fight. That's right. You can equal the battlefield. Yo, I have never heard this lady, um, and I never actually knew that uh, that the Terminator and the Matrix were based off of books by uh, Sophia here. Um, and it is just mind blowing that she hits on points of, hey, these two books are related. Which makes you think, it's like, whoa, what the heck? She's like, you know, hey, uh, Sarah Connor um, and JC, and JC be meaning Jesus Christ. And you're like, wait, what the heck? And then she talks about uh, immac immaculate conception, um, which is like the thing that happens. And like from that, you get Neo who's sent back uh, to the Matrix in order to learn um, about... Uh, how to, you know, save the world, basically. Oh, my God, it is mind-blowing. And she did a lot of jumping. She went from that to Facebook to uh, how can they track you with their bio data, which is, you know, things we've talked about before, similar to, like, Sam Altman's WorldCoin that uh, tracks your iris, you know, and they talked about Clear, which is a program when you're going from um, destination to destination. It's a, a way to enter uh, by your bio data as well you know they take facial recognition whatever they need in order to validate uh that you are who you say you are uh yeah this very well this uh person is talking sophia stewart is talking about an epic that she has written on where she's uh talking about the true wake up that is happening and my question to you are you taking the red pill or are you taking the blue pill i just want to know um because <laughs> you know it does matter and if you're a true goon you know what the answer is. You know what the answer is. We're going to wake up together. And I do believe she is uh, hitting on point. She is uh, entitled to her copyrights, you know, if she is the owner. And she came up with the idea, just like we have ownership with the Star Wars franchise and other franchises. She should be entitled uh, to the compensation that she has deserved. And I absolutely uh, can agree uh, with, uh, you know, how they try to snub her. And she mentioned that that money was taken and hidden in political gains so that way it could not be tracked. And she mentioned Hillary's campaign, you know, uh, she's probably done that homework. I'm not sure what happened with that, but it does sound uh, like nefarious things are happening even in the Hollywood industry, which, you know, we've insinuated. But it looks, sounds like this Sophia Stewart is really living through it. And, uh, you know, I applaud her, you know, she's written great books uh, that have ended up being billion dollar industries now um, and without her you know the term hey we're in the matrix we're going to come out of the matrix I don't think would ever exist you know what would we call it hey we're in the simulation we're going to come out of the simulation now nah, it doesn't sound the same matrix just hits the tongue better matrix just hits the tongue better all right let's keep it going brilliant. what a brilliant idea what do you mean just stop oil? All your stuff is made out of oil, you idiots. Your clothes, these jackets, they're all made out of oil. What the hell are you doing here making a nuisance of yourselves? It's a joke. What a joke. What are you doing here? Get out of the road. You're wasting everybody's time and petrol. All these guys, their engines are running all the time, wasting more bloody oil, you nutters. What is this made out of? What are your clothes made out of? How did your clothes get here? They got here by oil. What are you doing? This makes no sense at all. Just stop oil. You haven't thought about this. If you want to stop oil, you need to stay at home and go and live in a forest. Wow, this guy is speed speaking facts and the climate activists are like, I don't know what to do. They told us to congregate here. Where are we supposed to go from here? Someone's going to chant something and I just 
follow right along and that's sometimes what happens you join these groups and unfortunately you assume hey they have the same um you know uh things as me but unfortunately they don't have the same interests as you and they and they may have nefarious reasons and they hire leadership and you really got to understand what you're um voting for and a lot of the times the people that run uh the other side you're voting against run the side you're on too guys there have been many wars that both sides were funded by the same people so you gotta understand you gotta understand even when it comes to climate activists the oil that you're fighting against is also you know things that you guys are continuing to add to as well so you have to find that happy medium and truly find a way to protest that makes sense to the cause that you're protesting against and the guy's hitting on uh true facts there so let's uh see you know what ends up happening it's a whole different thing when we talk about the farmers protesting you know they oh boy they make it so real i love watching those guys oh man did you see the one where they're like they just like throw trash right at their um state buildings and stuff and people are just like what the hell like we're, someone's gonna have to clean this up yeah buddy you caused this mess if the farmers can't make us food we're all screwed <laughs> All right, let's keep it going. No, how do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm asking you personally how you feel about that because this goes, we're talking about power and influence and... I'm and saying, I'm saying what, I, what, what I care about is the, the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. And what I see all over the place is people who care about looking good while doing evil. Fuck them. Yeah, yeah, this is quite interesting. Looking good while doing evil. You know, many people insinuate, unfortunately, Elon, uh, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, you know, the true uh, billionaires of the world, you know, the Rothschilds, literally, uh, you can say many, many uh, things um, about these guys. And are they, you know, just looking pretty and really have nefarious reasons? Only time will tell. Oh, Teddy, the mark of the beast, it's coming in so many forms, Teddy. We don't know which one of them's doing it. There could be many beasts going, oh, Teddy, you're figuring it out. Oh, my God, you guys have no idea. Every day, every day I'm like, hey, which one is it? Who's the... Who's the beast and what is the end times? And one of the main things that recently the algorithms like is the end times are near. The end times are near. By the way, by the way, I want to give some shout outs. I want to give some shout outs to Jenna Cole, Lulu Bug, Tony Gar, Flaw Someone, Heist, XX Living Dead Girl, Jane Wolf, Tampa's Hot Wheels, Jenna Morrow, 5642, Dill All, Farmer Will, and crimson you guys are awesome i've recently seen that your guys are even stepping it up now more than ever um and it is it is amazing to see and i gotta say the same thing with both angel power page mom power i see you guys as well you guys um are killing it and i love to see that support and the, the goon support means so much to me and if you're like hey teddy why didn't you shout me out hey you need to start interacting with the videos so i start recognizing you guys uh, so I can give you the proper credit. So, um, yeah, if you're into that. And make sure, don't just be user dash. I'm tired of all these user dash. Set a username so I can give you proper credit. Have you ever heard of this, the story of the uh, the Stonehenge hippies? I have not. Okay. So this was uh, early 1970s. This was at a point in time when you could actually still, you know, go up to uh, Stonehenge and actually camp out if you wanted to. And there was a group of young adults that decided to camp out at Stonehenge. There was a storm that was rolling through. There was a policeman that was passing by. And for some reason, there was a farmer in the area that was still up. And as the storm rolled in, there was this big blue flash of lightning. They heard some screams and they noticed that everybody that was there at Stonehenge, those young adults, had completely disappeared. Poof. Poof. Gone. The question then becomes, okay, we've considered Stonehenge for calendrical purposes. We've considered it for ritual purposes. You know, we've considered it, okay, has astronomical alliance, uh, alignments. Was it possibly also some sort of portal or stargate? Wow, I've heard of stargates. We've even heard of moon pools. I'm such a big moon pool fan. Dude, I've never heard of the, about these hippies that... uh had a party at Stonehenge and uh, went through this, you know, Stargate type thing 
and uh, unfortunately are lost in the realm of time. Imagine somewhere in some reality, these hippies are coming out and be like, yo, it's 5,020. Look at all these things that have changed. Remember when we were in the year 1800 something? <laughs> I don't know. But oh man, oh man. That, is that why they stopped Stonehenge? They were like, hey, really? It's because of all the uh, hooligans that are, um, you know, um, graffitiing it or something. Uh, and really, or vandalizing it, but really, it, it, it's not. You know, it's because hey, we lost a group of people that partied there, and now we can't find them. Oh my god! Oh my god! I just want to see a real Stargate. I want to see a real moon pool. I want to see a real portal. I want to see it. I want to see it in 4K. I want to experience it in our lifetime. I'd be so happy if we all got to uh, see one. But unfortunately, I think the way CERN has this all drawn up, we're just they're just gonna keep. Uh, merging our timelines or we're just gonna keep popping and we'll never get to see it unless you work unless you work for the beast himself no just kidding <laughs> unless you work at CERN and you know something else oh Teddy oh Teddy you're breaking my mind <laughs> yo crazy Teddy I'm getting smarter than you now buddy look at this I'm gonna run myself now <laughs> all right uh, we're gonna keep it going so do you know the Polar Express theory on how the entire movie is actually a lie? How is the entire movie a lie? So there's a crazy theory that the Polar Express is actually connected to Back to the Future. But the evidence is crazy for this. So remember when Hero Boy is talking to the guy that sits on top of the train and he's basically asking him like, is the train real or is it magic or is it all just a dream? And the guy doesn't give him a straight answer. But then the train starts to malfunction and just for a split second, like it's only on the screen for a second, you can actually see that on the train, there's a flux capacitor. The same device that allows the DeLorean in Back to the Future to time travel you actually see a flux capacitor there yeah and in the polar express there's subtle hints given by the characters that actually point to time not working the same on the polar express so it makes sense that they're actually time traveling and in the movie we see newspapers with protests on them and the protest is actually to build the lone pines mall the same mall in back to the future and this all makes sense because the director of the polar express also directed back to the future but it shows how there's no magic in the movie at all it's just time travel I love this. I love these Easter eggs, especially when the directors are the same and they like to merge these types of uh, things, you know, and that's what this is. It's Easter eggs. They're putting in uh, little symbols that relate one or the other and give you that, you know, feel good feel of, hey, these universes between these movies are related. Uh, very, I loved Polar Express, guys. So that, let me tell you, it was one of the best movies I've seen that when I was a kid and still is one of the best Christmas holiday um movies uh, th that you know i believe children can experience even adults can experience it's a very uh ahead of its time type uh rendering that they did in order to produce it and it really sp speaks for itself you know the and, and you know brought this entire franchise and cgi and animations further from what things they've uh uh done but you know this i love this back to the future and the polar express being the same type of uh, universe is just uh, an awesome uh, theory to consider. All right, let's keep it going. The biggest medical mystery I know of is that no one born blind has ever been diagnosed with schizophrenia. And when I say no one, I mean no one. We've searched the historical records. We've looked in mental hospitals. There was a 2018 study that looked at half a million children, and we have never found a single person born blind who develops schizophrenia. Now this is really weird because if you have visual problems later in life, that actually makes you more likely to develop schizophrenia. Scientists have no idea why this happens. We have absolutely no clue. There are theories, of course, about, you know, visual cognition and schizophrenia. Clearly it plays some role, but we have no idea. And if we could understand this, this, this weird missing link as to why congenitally blind people are totally protected against schizophrenia. If we could understand that, we might be able to, to treat or cure or prevent schizophrenia much better. But right now, it is 100% one of the strangest mysteries in medicine and one of the few absolutes in medicine. There's not like a single outlier case ov over in Iowa or Croatia or something. No one. We've never found a single person. It's crazy. It really is. You know what's, what's crazy? My mind goes, hey, what if we find someone that has schizophrenia and make them blind? Will it cure them of schizophrenia? And I'm not saying, hey, long-term blindness. I mean that blindness where you cure them uh, eventually after they're done with the schizophrenia. Because, you know, hey, is it a uh, transitive property? You know, hey. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. It don't work that way, Teddy. That's not how it works. But I just want to know. I just wanted someone to do that research. Uh, but this is a quite interesting uh, fact or 
um, thing to know. You know, they're talking about theories on why this is. I start to go, it's the media, it's the marketing. That's what really caused the schizophrenia to come out. Um, all the things that these guys had to visually see or go through, that's what caused that trauma in their brain. Or maybe they were born with this um, trauma as well uh, in their brain. And that's what's causing the schizophrenia. I'm not a medical expert. Um, sounds like even the experts don't know why blind people can't get schizophrenia but it's quite interesting to know it is quite interesting to, to know all right let's do two more two more two more you can reverse the effect of glasses though by looking at the sun this guy went viral on this video explaining how he healed his eyesight just from changing his lifestyle and staring at the sun i did the exact same thing it's not a coincidence watch this video first thing in the morning able to stare directly into the sun through doing this i was able to stop wearing glasses and contact lenses it's been over three years now going up to four years since i put my contact lenses in correcting my vision staring at the sun they tell us not to stare at the sun so i believe this whole this whole reality is based on the light The opposite of what we've been told. That's my advice. You know what's interesting is when you played that first thing came in my mind. That would be perfect if AI just said, "Let's propagate this idea so we can force them even more to wear glasses," because we're going to convince them that a way to not wear glasses is by looking at the sun, which is going to make them have to wear glasses. <laughs> I don't wear glasses, I don't go outside, I don't look at the sun, and I am completely fine, guys. But it's staring of the sun, the sun healing, the sun giving out um, certain types of, uh, you know, radiation or UV or whatever it may be, frequencies uh, that are penetrating through may give you some healing. I'm not sure, I'm not the expert here. Uh, maybe this guy did encounter, hey, when he was able to sun gaze early in the morning, uh, maybe it gave him that LASIK type treatment and it corrected his uh, vision. But in fact, if this was true, you know, um, glasses have existed for a long time. This isn't something we've just uh, made in this uh, generation, right? So it's existed for a long time. You go, why didn't the ancients just sun gaze? You know, if we could cure it that easily, you start to wonder. So I'm not too sure if I completely buy... Uh, the sun gazing thing, I do believe there are benefits to it. I know B.O.B., one of those rapper uh, music artists, uh, gazed at the sun during an eclipse and actually hurt his eyes. Uh, so, you know, I'm not condoning uh, go out there and hurt your eyes. Do your own research before you do anything of that sort to your body. Uh, there potentially is no medical benefit to doing it, and that is the risk that you are taking. So be very careful, guys. Um, yeah, let's just do one more. Proof we are all being played. I get up at 4.45 in the morning and I don't see a sign of the government anywhere. Every single day for eight and a half hours, I exchange my time for labor. I don't see the government anywhere, except for on Thursdays. Thursdays, I get my paycheck. That's when the government shows up. That's when they feel they are entitled to split half of the currency I made for trading my time, my skills, my labor. This goes on throughout the year, where I'm responsible to keep records of all of this. At the end of the year, it's my responsibility to prepare all that documentation for them to review it. They then determine if their cut was large enough. If I don't meet their schedule, I face fines, fees, or the threat of being locked up in one of their cells. I guess some people call this taxation, but it doesn't meet my definition. To me, that sounds a lot more like fraud, embezzlement, and fucking slavery. It's long past due that we all stop participating in this. Yeah, I recently saw a thing. Why are we paying taxes when they can just print money? This makes no sense. They got us strict this in this simulation, guys. Uh, and unfortunately, we're playing by their rules and their game right now. And once we all uh, wake up and realize, hey, the money that we're even getting for them... Um, from them and storing that money in the things that they also own 
and they can restrict it's a it's a flawed system it's never gonna work in your favor so you gotta find the way out and decentralization cryptocurrencies is my way potentially right now not all the eggs go into cryptocurrency but you know stocks crypto you gotta you gotta do some um fair investing and even if it's a couple bucks that's all it took me just a couple bucks uh, you got to start somewhere. Market caps continue to increase. I love this video and he really hit on some valid points. This is the only time we are working for a system uh, and that system doesn't keep track of us. We basically follow all of its rules so we don't get fined. It's like, why are we doing all this? Yeah, yeah, crazy crazy to consider and with that guys i hope you are having fun i am having such a great increase um i'm really trying to work through my shadow band so i appreciate you guys supporting now more than ever especially clicking on the video trying to watch it from start to finish that is the most help uh more than anything it helps increase the watch time and watch time is everything for the youtube algorithm daddy that's what tells them what other like-minded goons they can find and shill the content to um so guys stay safe stay strong i will see you on the next one goodbye